Hey everybody, it's Tom at Buxton Auto. I got a new video for you. I think probably every one of us car dealers has done this before we became a car dealer. And I'll bet you there's thousands and thousands of people doing this every day. They watch these videos on how to flip cars and make money. And that's curb stoning. Now what curb stoning is, is when you basically are buying a car, you put it out on the curb or a corner or parking lot, whatever and you sell it. And generally that is somebody that bought the car from an individual, didn't transfer the title. They're gonna sell the title with an open title and that next person's gonna take that title to the county and get the registration done. Maybe you didn't know it, but in all 50 states, curb stoning or jumping the title is a felony. Now, I'm not telling you this to take money out of your pocket. Before I was a dealer, I bet I did it a hundred times. But the point to the story is it is actually a felony. It is a felony because the state government wants their money for the title transfer and tax on the vehicle. So are you going to get caught? You know, probably not, honestly. However, what happens if you do get caught is not real pleasant. So from a seller's standpoint, the problem with curb stoning is, say you bought the car from the original owner. He signs the title, he hands you the title. So of course, you're not gonna go register it. You're just gonna put that car right back out for sale for an extra thousand bucks or something. You do that. Now, the next guy comes and he buys the car from you. You may or may not have told him, yeah, I have an open title on this car. Or you may have lied and you might have said something like, hey, I'm selling this car for my aunt or my brother-in-law or whatever the story of the day is. Problem is, what happens if the original seller did not sign the title properly? Okay, so they signed the title Bob Smith. Maybe their legal name is Robert Smith. So the, the new buyer, the buyer that bought it from you, goes to the county tax office and they go to register the car and the county says, hey, I can't accept this title. We need an affidavit of fact because he signed Bob Smith on the back, but the front of the title is Robert Smith. So what's gonna happen? Well, what's gonna happen is your unsuspecting buyer is going to call you up, come find you, do whatever, and say, hey, I need this form because the title was signed wrong. Are you gonna be able to get it? If you are going to be able to get it, how? Are you going to go back to the original seller and say, hey, you signed this wrong. I need this form. Maybe it's been two months because you worked on the car. Maybe he's not around. Then what? Here's the, the long and short of it is it only takes one pissed off buyer to report you. And then they have you dead to rights on an effing felony because you didn't pay the tax on the vehicle that you bought. I mean, hey, I get it, right? Profit, profit, profit. And there's nothing wrong with profit. Profit's not a dirty word. The problem comes in that the state wants their effing money. And do you want to risk a felony to save this money? Now, different states have different rules. Some, they don't care how many cars you buy and then turn around and sell as long as you're paying your taxes. Other states limit you to five or to six or whatever, and then you get into the whole, well, you can do five yourself, and you can do five in your wife's name and five in your kid's name and five in your father-in-law's name, and do that how you want. My only thought or concern here is to tell you that, one, you probably shouldn't do this. If you are that excited about buying and selling cars, I would really consider getting a dealer license. Maybe you want to get a dealer license with a buddy or two because it's not going to be a full-time gig for any of you. It's supplemental income. But if you get a license, you have to have regular hours and things like that. Uh, so maybe get a license and have two or three guys that you are close with that you truly trust that get the license so that on everybody's day off, they can go be at the lot. Some lots, in, you know, some states require you to be open three days or four days a week or something like that. You have to have generally posted hours and you have to sell a certain number of cars a year. So between two or three guys that are like-minded like that, you absolutely can. 
then you also get access to the dealer auction, which can or cannot be a good bargain uh, in terms of cars. But the biggest thing is when you buy a car, either from an individual or a uh, auction, you don't pay tax on it. Uh, if you're a dealer, you actually are legally allowed to assign the title to your dealership on the back and keep that title on hand without ever going to the tax office and transferring the title into your dealer's name. Okay, when you sell the car, you are then required to collect the tax from your buyer, go to the county, do the title transfer, and mail the title or mail or, or have them pick up their tags. And then their, um, you know, their title comes from Austin. So when I do all these bonded title cars, no title cars, salvage title cars, all these that I do that originally had maybe no title or a salvage, I'm not paying tax on that. The tax is paid by the end consumer. When I go into the county because I need a, a title generated, it's 33 whole dollars. And in most states, this is going to be true. There are states that, um, for whatever reason, the car dealer sells them the used car and sends them on the way with their title in hopes that they're going to go do the title work. And they have a system in place like Arkansas or whatnot, I know is one. They have a system in place where if the person doesn't get that title transfer done, there's there's a problem and it doesn't fall back on the other on the original owner. Hey everybody, this is Tom. If you're still watching my video, that means you're watching this plug. And what I want to ask for in this plug is for you to give me a like and subscribe to my channel. I recently looked at my Facebook data and I found out that only 5%, 5% of the people that watch my videos are actually subscribed to my channel. I know part of it is because some of the stuff I do is very specific information. How do you sign your title? How do you get a copy of your title? What do the different title colors mean? And that's something that you probably go to YouTube because of a Google search. You find that information, you get your question answered, and you're done. And that's one of the reasons I've started including some behind the scenes from my car dealership into my channel. So if it's content that you think you like, that you might like, that you know someone that would like, or you just constantly are having questions, maybe you're buying and selling cars on your own at home in your garage, maybe you're thinking of opening a dealership, a subscribe to my channel and a like would go so far. I really appreciate it, guys. Thanks for watching. So again, I'm not I'm not trying to bag on curb stoners or people that are flippers, if you will, or or whatever. I get it. I like I said, I did it for years and years out of my driveway. I don't know, a hundred plus cars. I don't know. I never had a problem, but it is getting harder and harder to get away with doing it without having a problem. And again, it only takes one buyer to be angry with you, feel like you sold them a shit car, or the paperwork's effed up, or whatever that they're gonna report you. And when they report you, you are not getting out of it, okay? It is clear that you did it. And, um, you know, Johnny Law is gonna come visit you. Now, I know there's a lot of shadiness that goes on with the internet, uh, particularly. And I guess, it, you know, it was probably like that when we were using Green Sheet or the newspaper or the paper auto trader. You know, you can meet somebody in a parking lot so they don't know where you live. You can not show them ID, tell them you left your wallet at home if they ask. You can get a burner phone specifically just for buying and selling cars. You can do all that, but who wants to live with that concern over their head about this? So that's my advice. If you're going to do it, buy the cheaper cars, just pay your tax. Yes, it cuts into your profit, absolutely. But it also opens you up that you have a clean title in your name, which does make a difference to some buyers. Also, it takes the worry or concern of you becoming a felon off the plate. And it's something to consider going in with a couple of buddies and becoming a dealer. We'd love to have you. Anyway, that's my uh, piece of advice or warning or whatever you want to call it today, guys. But I appreciate y'all watching the video. Uh, like, follow, subscribe, follow along. I do a whole bunch of videos on different title issues, DMV forms things like that. Appreciate y'all watching. Have a great day.